Uh, today we're just going to talk about some some basic wiring that I did um, for my inverter and my extra batteries. Okay, so this back area here is where I plan to put my batteries. I just felt it was going to be easier to run all the wiring in case I needed to repair anything. It's going to have easy access. My fuse panel is going to be back here that I'll show you guys later. Solar charger, inverter, so it kind of just made sense to have it all here. Now on my Sprinter van, I have the AC unit, so there's a lot more electrical stuff, hoses, um, exposed once you remove the headliner. You can also see where they run most of their factory wiring along the left side here, along the back wall here. There's a lot of openings. You can get from one area or one end of the panel to the other end of the panel pretty easy. You actually have a nice, probably about three inch hidden area that I'm gonna to try to hide some of my components in. So a lot of my wiring here, as you see, comes through this gray channel and runs right up the wall. All my wiring, AC and 12 volt and solar, runs up this channel on the passenger side by the sliding door and pops out at the other end. If you see here, one thing you gotta remember is all your wiring that makes any kind of contact with a metal surface, just for peace of mind, I put some kind of protection. Um, remember this is a vehicle, so it's gonna be vibrating. So you wanna limit that. And I also reinforce it in certain areas to keep it from moving up and down. See, I use these brackets that hold in place to help secure it so it doesn't move around. It travels across to the other side of the wall where it comes down again, being protected, down the channel and it pops out right down here. Each panel or wall will have its own 12 volt and 110 AC running to it. So if I ever wanted to add a plug in that location, it would be very easy to Factory. do. Right here where this beam is, you can see they're put together here. There actually is no way to get wires across from one panel to the other. So what I did, if you can see here, I drilled my own holes using a metal hole saw. There it is. Right here. Along this wall. Here's the other side of that panel. One thing you gotta remember when you make these holes, make sure you take a file and sand it down, file it down really good, get any sharp edges. I used some sandpaper and then in the end, you still want to protect it with some kind of material as it's going across there. Like I said, there's some channels here where the cables run up, come out through here. And as you see, I ran it right above their stock wiring, nice and clean. And here it is dropping down through this channel, comes down the wall and pops out here. I looked underneath here and found an area that already was running wires. These are stock wires from Mercedes that feed the air conditioning. And they pop out through here to the roof where there's a AC cover. What I did was remove that AC cover and follow those wires where they popped out. So what I did was I ended up putting my own wiring. And what I got here is power cables. I have a solar pair of 10 gauge wiring running through here. So everything is stubbed out. So when I get my solar panel, I'll be able to tap into it. And that just runs along here and back in and ties in with all the other wiring and heads back towards that main channel in the wall that we've been using to drop everything down and go to our battery. One thing too, along with that reverse camera is I installed some speaker wire. 
So what I did was I ran my own speaker wire that drops in this channel and is bundled up in here because the plastic that covers this pillar here or this post comes off very easy. So later on I can make access in here, run it down the channel that leads through the door and install my speakers in this general area. So let me show you where that speaker wire and the reverse camera wire run. If you guys uh, haven't seen the split loom stuff, this stuff is great. As soon as I added this split loom, it was amazing. It just cleaned everything up. So I recommend buying split loom in different sizes and a bunch of zip ties. So it runs along the top here. Runs over this post. Again, hops over to the front of the cab area and drops down. And if you notice here, there is a nice open area where they run their stock wiring for speakers. Drops right down in there and I was able to put temporarily all my wiring in the glove box. Now, I ended up installing about three power lights that all run independently down again the same channel that the speaker wires run along to the front cab and come over to the very front light console area of your headliner because that I found is going to be a great spot to add your overhead lights. You want them to be easily accessible while you're driving in case you need to turn them on and there's a lot of void space area here in the headliner where you can mount your switches. Real quickly before I forget, on the wiring that I installed for the new LED lights, there's going to be three rows of two LED lights. As you see, there's one wire here, one down there, and one farther back. After a while, you start running so many wires, it starts getting really tight in your split loom or in your, in your channels that you're running your wires in. So not everything has to have a ground going back to the battery. So in this case, I have my hotline and I have my neutral grounded into the chassis of the vehicle. So now there's only a single wire that leads out of here. Okay guys, uh, hopefully that helps out a little bit as far as uh, realizing uh, what kind of access you have and, and where you can run your wiring.